The General Commission on Christian Unity and Interreligious Concerns is charged by the 2008 General Conference with a monumental task to help bring healing to indigenous peoples through an act of repentance. Our church, we are being called to confession. For generations, indigenous peoples have experienced collective removal from their homelands, violation of human rights, and cultural genocide. In the case of the 1864 Sand Creek Massacre, there is a shocking connection to the church. It was a Methodist minister, Colonel John Chivington, who led the charge on a Cheyenne and Arapaho encampment. More than 165 were killed, mostly women and children. But I remember thinking, why, why? And, and for, the, for the longest time, and up until a couple of years ago, you know, maybe just recently, I finally just let it go. You know, I'm here in the Rocky Mountain Conference and the Yellowstone Conference and the Sand Creek Massacre. It, it shapes our community in Denver today. It shapes the history of the churches uh, that I have oversight for uh, today. It shapes the tension between Native communities and the predominantly Anglo uh, majority today. And so we have to really come to grips with that particular history and what it means and, and the harm that it continues to do uh, to cause in the human family. Historical traumas like this have left many Native peoples skeptical that an act of repentance by the United Methodist Church will make a difference. The people are going to have to change. They, they forced our people here to change. They took away the language, they took away the land, like Brother said. And they took all that away. And so, what, what can they apologize for? And how deep is that apology going to be? Staff and commission members are clear. Words are not enough. Because of the long and painful history, this journey must have integrity, be authentic, and be credible. It is incumbent upon us to struggle spiritually with the ecclesiological implications attendant to this act of repentance and to provide ample and compelling evidence of demonstrable denominational contrition for our collective responsibility. If the United Methodist Church wants to be a part of bringing healing to these people through this process, that it has to be a journey, that we have to uh, acknowledge some of the hurts and the pains. The journey has begun. Throughout the quadrennium, nearly two dozen listening sessions have been held including two in the central conferences to understand the history and current realities of indigenous peoples. Because we, we have to live in two different worlds. But my thought is if there is something that you still can do that belongs to your people, then do it. The commission is working on material to help prepare the United Methodist Church for the act of repentance. The hope is that the event on April 27, 2012 is only the starting point for the healing of relationships between the United Methodist Church and indigenous peoples. The General Commission on Christian Unity and Interreligious Concerns asks for your prayers and continued support as we engage in this journey.